So for this part of the chapter, we have to talk about something called respiratory substrates. And what that means is we are going to be focusing on organic molecules that can be broken down to generate ATP. So you might be thinking, wait a second, we talked about that much earlier, where we said glucose is the thing that is broken down to get ATP and glucose is a type of carbohydrate. But you see, glucose is not the only thing that our cells can break down in order to generate ATP molecules. We can also break down lipids and we can also break down proteins. So the question is, if your cell actually has access to carbohydrates like glucose, lipids such as fatty acids, and proteins in the form of, um, well, you can say specific amino acids, which substrate or which molecule would your cell actually break down in order to generate some ATP molecule? You see, all three of them can be broken down by the cells. That's not the problem here. The problem is which one will be the most efficient in order to generate the highest amount of ATP? Because logically, the more ATP you get, the better, correct? So between carbohydrates and lipids, we will talk about that one later, but let's focus on proteins. And you see, proteins are composed of amino acids. And while amino acids can be broken down to be a source of fuel, amino acids actually have a more important function in your cells, in which they have to be combined together to make proteins, and these proteins can then be used uh, to form antibodies, enzymes, hemoglobin, collagen, you know, all these kinds of things that your cells actually need. So while your cell can break down amino acids, to generate ATP, the cell would prefer not to do such things because the amino acids are used to build or to produce other things as well. So the question over here is, between carbohydrates and lipids, however, examples of carbohydrates, glucose, and an example of lipid here I'm showing is fatty acid. Uh, you can see one molecule of glucose there and a molecule of fatty acid. Uh, which one is able to generate more ATP when it's broken down? Okay, so let's look at a chemical formula for two of them. Glucose is C6H12O6. The fatty acid I'm showing you here is an example. It's not not all fatty acids have this chemical formula, but this particular fatty acid has C18H34O2. So right off the bat, sometimes I like to ask my students this question. If both these molecules are broken down separately, which molecule is able to yield or produce or give you more ATP in the end? So some students will say, well, glucose, and some students will say, well, no, it's fatty acids. But you must be able to justify your answer. So what you have to do is you have to focus on the hydrogen in this case. And the glucose actually has less carbon-hydrogen bonds, which means less carbon attached to hydrogens. And the fatty acids obviously have more carbon-hydrogen bonds because they have more carbon and they also have more hydrogen as well. You have to say it like that. The glucose has less carbon-hydrogen bonds and the fatty acids have more carbon-hydrogen bonds. So when it is broken down, the glucose will give you some hydrogen atoms and obviously when the fatty acids are broken down from the carbon-hydrogen bonds, more hydrogen atoms are released. And based on what we've studied, the hydrogen should be accepted by carriers such as NADs and FADs. So because the glucose gives out less hydrogen atoms, it will produce less reduced NAD and less reduced FAD. And conversely, for fatty acids, because it gives out more hydrogen atoms, it will produce more reduced NADs and more reduced FADs. So far, so good. So what's the thing? Because these reduced NADs and reduced FADs will move towards oxidative phosphorylation. And in glucose, because it produces less reduced NADs and less reduced FADs, oxidative phosphorylation will take place. That is true, but you will get less ATP out of it. Simple as that. And because fatty acids, when they are broken down, will give more reduced NADs and reduced FADs, higher rates of oxidative phosphorylation happens, and obviously more ATP are produced in this place. So in the exam, all you just have to say is fatty acids have more carbon-hydrogen bonds 
And when they are broken down, they will release out more hydrogen atoms, which will give you more reduced NADs and reduced FADs, which in turn has a higher rate of oxidative phosphorylation and therefore produces more ATP in the process. But the question then is, if our cell has access to glucose and fatty acids, and if fatty acids actually provide us with more ATP, why then does the cell actually use glucose as the main source of energy? Because it's kind of weird, isn't it? You have fatty acid right there, which is a fantastic source of energy. It can provide you with more ATP for the cells. Yet our main source of energy is still glucose molecules. The answer to that is a little bit complicated, so but let's look at it. Now, I'm drawing out a cytoplasm here, and you can see part of the mitochondrion, the smooth outer membrane, the folded inner membrane, you can see the cristae, which is those finger-like structures, and also I've labeled the mitochondrial matrix. Under normal circumstances, if you remember in the previous videos, when glucose is used during respiration, Assuming this is aerobic respiration, by the way, the glucose molecule, which is 6 carbon, will be broken down into two pyruvate molecules uh, through the process of glycolysis. And then the pyruvate will enter the matrix. And then the pyruvate, which are, which are three carbon molecules, uh, they will be broken down through link reaction and they will form something known as acetyl coenzyme A. And acetyl-CoA, if you remember, will then enter the Krebs cycle where they will be completely broken down. We know this. Alternatively, if you want to break down fatty acids, I'm drawing out fatty acids over here. Don't have to memorize that um, structure, but I'm just showing you that the fatty acid here is made out of 14 carbons. Each of the circle represents a carbon. Okay, And the fatty acids do not undergo a process known as glycolysis. No. If the cell wants to break down fatty acids, the fatty acids will have to first enter the mitochondrial matrix directly, where in the matrix, they will then be broken down into two carbon molecules. And because fatty acids are made out of a long hydrocarbon tail, you'll be able to get a lot of these two carbon molecules. Once they're broken down into these particular two carbon molecules, they will then be converted into acetyl-CoA, and then they will be shunted or it will enter the Krebs cycle as well. So there are some similarities when you break down glucose or fatty acids. But of course, it's quite different too. Because glucose will have to undergo glycolysis and link reaction, which happens in the cytoplasm and then the mitochondrial matrix. Whereas fatty acids are broken down directly in the matrix. So you're like, okay, but that still doesn't answer my question as to why the cell still prefers glucose over fatty acids. One possible answer, which is quite simple, is as follows. The pathway, which I've highlighted in yellow over here, I'm highlighting it in yellow, look at the arrow there. That pathway can only happen when the cells have enough oxygen, which means to say that this pathway is an aerobic pathway. All right, because why do the cells need oxygen? The cells need oxygen for oxidative phosphorylation, and it needs to generate, uh, it needs to regenerate the NADs and FADs, right? We talked about this in the previous video. But the important thing that we have to understand here is lipids are only able to be broken down when the cells have sufficient oxygen. That is the caveat when it comes to breaking down lipids. However, glucose is a bit more interesting. Yes, glucose requires oxygen to be broken down in the aerobic pathway, as I've highlighted there in yellow as well at the top. However, glycolysis does not necessarily need oxygen. If there is oxygen, glycolysis can happen, but if there was not enough oxygen in the cell, glycolysis can still continue to take place in the anaerobic pathway. We talked about this in the previous video, where in animal cells, the glucose is broken down into pyruvate and then it's converted into lactate, or in plants and yeast, the pyruvate is converted into carbon dioxide and ethanol. So that's the advantage that glucose has over fatty acids. During aerobic respiration, both glucose and fatty acids can be used, but during anaerobic respiration, 
only glucose can be broken down. That is why glucose is the main source of energy for the cell. Because it's the easier source of energy to be broken down as well, right? Because it's only 6 carbon, and 6 carbon is easier to break down than anything that is containing 14 carbon. I guess our cells are a little bit lazy too, but you know, can you blame them? Here's the weird thing, a lot of people assume that when you're running as fast as you can, people assume that you are breaking down fats because they're like, oh, I'm running quite fast and I need more energy and therefore, you know, I think my body is breaking down fats. No, it's actually breaking down glucose because only glucose can be broken down in the anaerobic pathway. So these are the differences that you have to be aware of between glucose and fatty acid as respiratory substrates.